Welcome to Cancer Treatment Updates, where treatment options for cancer are discussed openly and demystified. Welcome to today's episode of Cancer Treatment Updates. I'm your host, Francisco Javier Esteva, medical oncologist uh, based in New York City. The focus of today's episode will be on the role of chemotherapy in patients with early stage breast cancer. When a patient is diagnosed with stage one, two, or three breast cancers, what we call early stage, very often the treatment involves surgery, sometimes radiation therapy, especially if a patient undergoes lumpectomy as opposed to mastectomy, and systemic therapy, meaning chemotherapy, endocrine therapy or hormonal therapy, HER2 therapy, if the tumor is HER2 positive, and so on. So there are many types of treatments and uh, for each patient. So breast cancer is not um, a single disease, it's different types of diseases, and depending on the stage and the molecular markers, we would use different types of treatment plans. You would discuss with your surgeon, medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, we work with pathologists, radiologists, pharmacists, and many a big team of group of people helping to do things better uh, to improve the chance for cure. So which patients with early stage breast cancer would benefit from chemotherapy? Many years ago, um, or a few decades ago, when uh, it was realized that cancer could spread into other organs, even from early on, Many patients were treated with chemotherapy and endocrine therapy or hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy is important in patients with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer or progesterone receptor positive breast cancer. So if your tumor is ER positive or PR positive, meaning hormone receptor positive, then hormone therapy will be indicated. And that is something that is done after surgery and radiation or chemotherapy if needed, and that hormonal therapy is given normally for five years, sometimes longer. That will be the uh, subject for another video. So which patients need chemotherapy in addition to hormonal therapy? If a tumor is estrogen receptor positive and progesterone receptor positive, ER or PR, either one, and HER2 negative, the main systemic treatment to prevent a recurrence is hormone therapy. Which of those patients would need chemotherapy in addition to endocrine therapy has been the subject of investigation for many, many years. 20 years ago, we would give chemotherapy to a lot of patients, even if the tumor was more than one centimeter in, in diameter, a small tumor that was invasive with uh, ERP, a positive HER2 negative disease, a lot of these patients would be offered chemotherapy for a small improvement in disease-free survival over time. Then we developed a number of molecular tests, such as Oncotype, MamaPrint, Prosigna, many other tests that are now available where we can look at a specific set of genes in the tumor, besides the ER, PR, and HER2, because each cell may express up to 20,000 genes, we, we identified the most important ones. Um, in, in Oncotype DX is a test that looks at, looks at 21 genes. Pro, uh, Prosigna or Pan50 looks at approximately 50 genes. Mama prints 70 genes and so on. So we use one of these tests uh, nowadays for patients with invasive, breast cancer that has ER or PR positive and HER2 negative, we normally use one of these tests, whether it's Oncotype, Prosigna, or MamaPrint are the most uh, commonly used. And if those tests tell us that the tumor is at low risk of recurrence, then those patients would not need chemotherapy. For example, with the Oncotype test that we developed many years ago, I was involved in one of the first uh, clinical trials in, involving this test um, and um, we basically kind of identify women at low risk, intermediate risk or high risk of recurrence based on the uh, score we get from these 21 genes. The test includes 
16 cancer-related genes and five controls, but overall it gives us a score. If that is score, initially the, the range of the scores actually has been changing the numbers, but what we use today, which is based on large randomized trials, one was called Responder, the other one was called Taylor X, in patients with positive notes or negative notes, respectively, uh, the number uh, that we are interested when we look at this report, the most important number is a score of 25. So, for example, in the Taylor X trial, which was a study where we enrolled more than 10,000 patients with invasive breast cancer, early stage, with negative lymph nodes, so the tumors were invasive, the axillary lymph nodes under the arm were not involved, and we knew some of these patients benefit from chemotherapy, but we didn't know who they were. So in the past, we would give chemotherapy to all of these women. With the Taylor X study, uh, uh, we randomized patients uh, in the intermediate range. So patients who had high risk of recurrence, all of them received chemotherapy. Patients with very low risk of recurrence did not get chemotherapy. And actually, most of those patients, more than 95%, 90% of patients did not develop recurrence in some subsets up to 98%. So those patients with low uh, oncotype recurrence score, normally less than uh, up to um, less than 11, do not need chemotherapy. And patients with the, where the score was higher than 25 also were advised to get chemotherapy. The ones in between 11 and, and 25 were randomized to receive chemotherapy or not. And basically, to make a long story short, there was no um, significant benefit for adjuvant chemotherapy, meaning chemotherapy after surgery, uh, in those patients with low or intermediate uh, recurrence score. Only patients where the recurrence score oncotype is greater than 25 is where we consider chemotherapy and talk to patients about chemotherapy. If the oncotype score is less than 25, we normally do not recommend chemotherapy uh, for patients who are postmenopausal, so after menopause, with no negative, no involvement of the axillary lymph nodes, and the tumor is ER or PR positive and HER2 negative. So that's a big improvement in that we do not need to give chemotherapy to these patients. Now, in premenopausal patients uh, before menopause, then uh, in patients who had an oncotype closer to 20 to 25, there may be some benefit uh, from chemotherapy for those patients. So again, it has to be individualized. Not all patients and not all breast cancers are the same. Now, in patients um, who are after menopause, for example, none of them seem to benefit with negative nodes. So that's a large number of patients we don't have to treat with chemotherapy. Now, a separate situation is in patients with relatively small tumors uh, without skin involvement, you know, stage two or so, not stage three breast cancer, but where the lymph nodes under the arm uh, that, uh, are involved. So involvement of the axillary lymph nodes. For patients who had one to three positive lymph nodes in the axilla with invasive cancer, all those patients also were treated with chemotherapy because we were concerned the cancer may spread to other organs, lungs, liver, bone, etc. So we did another study in those patients with the same test, the oncotype, where patients with one to three positive nodes and an oncotype less than 25 were randomized to chemotherapy or no chemotherapy. In patients who were postmenopausal after menopause, there was no benefit by giving chemotherapy. So we're also excluding those patients from chemotherapy. In premenopausal patients, we could not rule out a beneficial effect of chemotherapy. So patients who are premenopausal before menopause with involvement of the axillary lymph nodes, we still recommend chemotherapy for those patients. And now we are um, doing clinical trials in patients with negative nodes or some positive nodes uh, with low risk oncotype that 
we are not sure whether chemotherapy effects are due to the um, ovarian suppression effects of chemotherapy, meaning chemotherapy can damage the ovaries, reduce the estrogen production in young women, premenopausal patients, and that may be the benefit we see from chemotherapy. So the question is, do we need chemotherapy for those patients with low oncotype scores but who have positive nodes if we can achieve the same thing but by using ovarian suppression? So that is a clinical trial that is ongoing right now. We don't know the answer to that. Where patients would be randomized to chemotherapy if they have one to three positive nodes with a low recurrent score versus endocrine therapy alone with ovarian suppression. Ovarian suppression is something we can do in different ways. We can use an injection, medications called like Lupron or Soladex. They're called LH RH agonists that basically block the ovarian function. We can use that with an injection every month, sometimes even every three months, or we can remove the ovaries. But medically, we can do that. And it may be that the, that approach in combination with the standard endocrine therapy such as tamoxifen or other treatments like an aromatase inhibitor, medications that you take by mouth for like five years uh, typically, the combination of that injection to suppress the ovaries plus the endocrine therapy could be as effective as chemotherapy. We don't know the answer to that. It's a clinical trial that is ongoing. But the important thing and what I wanted to discuss in this video is that um, not everyone needs chemotherapy. Not every patient with invasive cancer needs chemotherapy. If the tumor is hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative, hormone therapy is the most important part of the treatment in addition to surgery and radiation therapy. And then we are trying to identify which patients may need chemotherapy in a more personalized, individualized way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe to our channel and keep coming back for new episodes of Cancer Treatment Updates. Thank you.